Alrighty, and today guys, I'm gonna show you how I blended some skin tones in a recent fit illustration that I call Crazy Town. All right, but before I get started into that, I wanted to uh, respond to a question that I got from Raymond R in Colorado, and he emailed me a question about my foot illustrations or my composites and how I made money at them and marketed them. And so I really wanted to take a moment here real quick and answer that question for Raymond. And, and by the way, Raymond, thanks for asking the question. Uh, to, real quick, to get started here. Uh, I started compositing about six months ago. I really didn't know much about it. I had some Photoshop skills a little bit before that, but not a lot. But I really dedicated a lot of time, uh, late nights, early mornings, to honing my skills, watching YouTube videos, you know, learning from other uh, composite photographers that I admired and uh, that inspire me and I've created a uh, YouTube video on that. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time in the early days here for this first six months practicing my skills, getting better. I've also uh, trying to build a, a portfolio which has really been huge to build a portfolio that I believe is good enough then to go out and start showing people and trying to get work. Now, I initially went into this thinking that, of course, with composite photography, that it's more of a commercial oriented industry. And that was my focus that I was going to go commercial with this. And in several years ago, when I was in photography, back in the mid 90s, I was doing some commercial work. Before that, in the early 90s, I worked at a portrait studio that, in Kansas City that was a high end a uh, portrait studio whose target market was more of the affluent luxury type of market. And so getting into this now, initially I thought I was going to do commercial. And then I started to think, well, everything that I see out there with portraits is kind of more traditional, uh, in my opinion, more boring, just, you know, the same thing where everybody's wearing the white shirts and the blue jeans and they're all posed in front of this uh, you know, babbling stream or in front of their home or whatever it is. And I've done that. And there certainly is a huge market for that. Cause a lot of people want that. I just didn't want to do it. It, to me, it's boring. It's boring to do it. It's boring to, uh, edit it. It's boring to sell it all those different things. So I really thought that I had something special that I could take my, comp my compositing and turn it into uh, a creative portrait that I can then sell to more of a luxury market. And I really chose a luxury market because the only people that can really afford the time that I invest in this and the energy that I invest in it is more of a luxury market. So today I'm going after more of a luxury market and uh, an affluent market, uh, doing a lot of marketing and networking and things like that in my uh, in Dallas area here to to get more business. And it's starting to move, it's starting to roll, but as building any business, it just takes some time and, and momentum building. And so that's the process that I'm in. I'm also going after a commercial uh, market as well. I'm looking for a photo rep. So I'm sending out emails and contacting them. Also uh, sending out emails and contacting uh, art directors or creative directors, art buyers, those type of things for the more commercially oriented uh, venues, which I think my work would be awesome for that. Anyway, uh, this is where I'm going with my foot illustrations, uh, composite photography. Uh, I think it's different. I'm carving a new niche, kind of carving a new market. So I'm learning a lot in that process. If you have any questions, just ask. I'll answer them. Might even answer them here on a video. So anyway, let's get started into this tutorial today and let me get my fancy glasses on here so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And this is the composite that I'll be working on here and I call this Crazy Town. And I call it Crazy Town because every time my wife walked by when I was edi editing it, uh, she asked me, how's Crazy Town going? <laughs> and so that's why it ultimately became Crazy Town. So we're going to take this image here and this is where we're going here. And so what happened is when I did the photography of Mary, uh, afterwards, after we did all the shots and everything, she asked me, oh, did you get my ring in that? And this is the ring that we're talking about here. And I said, well, let me see. And I looked through the images and of course, no, I didn't. So I had to take another image here of Mary and her hand to make sure that I got the ring here. So what I'm going to do is just breaking into this real quick. This is this is going to be super easy, all right? Super quick. So we're going to take a lasso. 
kind of go around that hand there and cut it out. Command J on a Mac. And then I'm going to take that and then just put it, drop it right in on the image that we're working on here. And there's some issues with it, as you will be able to see. One is that it's a heck of a lot bigger. So we're going to drop the size down here. And we're going to bring it up. So the first obvious thing that we're going to be able to see here about this is that, uh, and this is what I saw, is that one is the hand and the glass are at a different angle. Okay, so, and what I mean by that is, you can see her forearm here, and it's uh, more facing the camera than it is here. However, that said, I thought that we could get away with it anyway. All right, this is a fit illustration, so we can get away with some things here on this type of stuff that we can't get away with necessarily on other type of photography. Uh, if you're going for more of a photorealistic type of thing, then of course you can't get away with that. So we're going to size this. And I'm really looking at the bottom here where her arm, uh, the edges connect. And I want to make sure that I get those lined up pretty well here because I think we can fudge it enough. I think that's pretty good. Sometimes, you know, I work with a Wacom tablet, Wacom tablet, whatever the heck you want to call it, and sometimes it works really good, and then other times I find that the mouse, for me, works a little better. For this, it works a little better with the mouse. So we're just going to take that there. All right? So with that, we can go in there and start cutting out or put a layer mask on it, get our br get my brush tool, uh, make sure my hardness is, I like it to be around 70-ish, uh, and then take that down. And then I can just paint out whatever edges I want to there. And so if I did that, course I don't want to do the hand because that's what I'm trying to work on so come in there you do that and that's what we're going to get so I'm not going to go through all that I've already got it done here in this group and so I turned all my stuff off and this is where we started with here so I've already kind of uh cut out all the edges here that matter to me. I left all the edges around here because ultimately I'll take this uh, this piece and I'll drop it into the big fit illustration or big composite that I'm doing and I'll cut it out there in more detail. And so starting with this, you can see that her hand is kind of green versus her arm, which is kind of reddish tone. And so needed to know how I fix that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go down here and put a, uh, let's see, a color balance layer on it and I'll attach it to that specifically. And then in here, I'm gonna take that up and I'm just, you know, there's no science behind this. There's no, there's no numbers, there's no science, uh, there's no absolute like, I will show you how I use color balance levels and curves to get a hand that looks pretty dang close to its original tone of the skin. And so it's important to know though, that there's no absolutes to this. It, you know, you just have to kind of work it and see what works for you and what doesn't work. And that's what I did here. So here I used the red or the cyan and I took it from being kind of green, bumped it up to about 15, and brought it into the red a little bit. And then I took the green here and bumped it down to negative three. And then I took the blue and I bumped it up to three. Okay. And that gives you a tone that looks pretty dang close to the uh, skin tone of her arm, which I think is pretty dang cool. All right. So then we're going to go into our levels and add a levels attached to that layer as well. 
And then in here, I just kind of bumped it up again, just looking, you know, it's a little bright to me. You can see kind of a little edge there and I didn't like that. So I wanted to bring it down just a little bit and mess with the tone or, or the um, brightness of it. And so I brought that down just a little bit. You can see that it, if we go extreme here, you can see that brings it up, go down, brings it down. So you can, there's a lot of room here that you can play with and figure out what do you like. That's looking pretty good in there. And then when I do that, you can see that it comes out a little too red. So I'm going to go up to my, um, and add a curves layer here. And I just play with these things and see what I like the best. I mean, that's not looking too bad right there. I mean, it really covers up that difference in skin tone from her wrist down into her arm. And as you can see, it reads off pretty well. It doesn't read off like it was before where her arm... Her wrist is more facing you like this versus like this. And so I just add that in and it reads well, I think, you know, and then you can come down if you don't like, if it's too red for you, just come down and bump that down just a little bit. We can bump it down to maybe uh, 10, a little less red. So, I mean, that looks pretty good right there, don't you think? So that's what I did just now. This is what I did earlier. And I think you'll see that they look relatively the same, but there's a little difference in them. And there's no, you know, for what I do, for the composites that I do, it doesn't really matter because then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start adding shadows to it and highlights to it and and photillustrating it and all those great things. So that covers up some of the, maybe some of the more minor kind of mistakes or details that I'm trying to cover but this works really well and I think you can do this on a lot of different type of compositing that you do with people most of the people that I put in my uh, composites are pieces of each other so like Mary here took I think five different images to create her with the baby doing what I wanted the baby to do or what actually she wanted the baby do to do which was have his head down like that and then we had to go in and uh, put in a, a different, you know, put in the champagne into the glass and that type of thing. And uh, just a lot going on here that we created with Mary to create this hand that looks completely normal, natural, like she was actually standing there holding that glass of champagne. So anyway, that's my tutorial today on how to blend the skin tones in your composite photography when you're piecing people together to create one image. This is a really nice technique. It's very simple, very quick. Just play around with it. There's no certain specific way to do it. I can't give you the numbers that are gonna give you an absolute because everybody's skin tone's a little bit different. Every, you know, the brightness of your photography is a little bit different. All these variations or variables that, that change what you will do. And next time I do a composite, I can guarantee you I probably won't use the same exact technique. I'll probably figure something else out or do something else. So anyway, that's how I blend the skin tones. Hope this helps you with your composites. Go out, give it a shot, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time on The Fatillustrator.